ますよこの音と共に友と共に着いた場所暗いやみんなそこに沈むすくものとも復活の浮上真夜中にほどズームアップネキアップ Growing up as a black Japanese person following the sport of boxing, I always wondered, is there a boxing scene in Japan? Are there any good Asian boxers besides Manny Pacquiao and Onito Donaire? And why isn't Asian boxers really even talked about much? When I came on to educating myself on the Japanese boxing scene, I really came at the right time. It was a golden age of talent that was not getting talked about much at all. <laughs> When I started making YouTube videos as early as 2010, I dedicated a part of my channel and on other social media platforms to promoting Asian boxing as a whole to show that these guys are good and try to put away these bad stereotypes I hear a lot, especially about Thai fighters, and just bring in some light. In the beginning, it was awful. For years, that is. I caught a lot of shit for highlighting these guys and educating the masses in my videos and on my social media platforms. I would get comments from, stop talking about these Asian bums. You need to start promoting more black fighters and stop talking about these Asian rice paddy farmers. Pretty fucked up shit here. But your boy here didn't listen and continued to promote this topic over the decade. Now it's 2020 and in no way put the West on notice where they are given Japan and its fighters the respect that they should have received years ago. It is finally time to put out a video of the best current talent in the Japanese boxing scene. To start this list off, we got two dudes like me, black and Japanese. That's pretty dope right there. Sean Oda, 10 and 0, 8 knockouts, 22 years old from the Okinawa prefecture. My fan from Oki too. Got some of that Oki blood. What's good, fam? Oda is a Japanese youth lightweight champion. Despite being inactive the year 2019, I'm hoping to see more of him in 2020. You got a clean Aristo there. I may say, I do a little bit of Huna myself. Fifteen and zero with ten knockouts. Andy Hiraoka is 23 years old from the Kanagawa area. He is Ghanaian mix, former Japanese youth lightweight champion, but currently fighting at the junior welterweight division. Back in 2015, he came to America to train under the tutelage of the great Roger Mayweather and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. He since returned back to Japan, where he signed to promoter, manager, and former two-time world champion Hiroyuki Ohashi. The Ohashi Gym has produced great talent over the years, and in recent years with Katsushige Koshima, Akira Yaegashi, and most famously Naoya Inoue, is always in good hands. Recently at the end of 2019, Hiraoka made his US debut putting away his opponent in the second round. If he keeps it up at this pace, I think you will hear more from him and boxing news and possible title contention in 2021 and 2022. Junto is 20 and 0 with 15 knockouts. At 22 years old, he is currently ranked number eight in the world by Ring Magazine. He stepped up big in 2019 and fought former IBF IBO champion Milan Milindo, getting the TKO victory in the sixth round. On April 4th, he's about to fight for his first world title. It is for a vacant WBO title against 24-1 hard-punching Guillermo Megramo. Genjiro Shigeoka, 5-0, 4 knockouts. This footage here is from his pro debut at the age of 18, and I could already say he is going to get a title shot either by the end of this year or early next year. He is currently ranked number 13 by the WBO and number 5 by the WBA. And oh boy, knockout CP Freshmart. Better hide because this dude is scary. Your days holding the belt, borderline hostage, is coming to an end. I've been following this division for years now. When you see such technique like this and punching power, it is blatantly clear. Clear. This guy is going to be champion. Ryosuke Iwasa, 27-3 with 17 knockouts. On his list here, Iwasa is one of the only veteran fighters that will be 
mentioning. He is a former IBF Super Bantamweight Champion. His only losses were against former world champions. His first loss particularly was against former lineal Bantamweight Champion Shinsuke Yamanaka for the Japanese Bantamweight title. Despite Hajime no Ippo being an anime, it does educate you to an extent how the boxing scene is over in Japan. These national belts like the Japanese title and regional belts like the OPPF title, they carry a lot of weight. They actually mean something while in America the NABF title is unfortunately really downplayed and devalued. Iwasa is back on the road for another title shot after stopping Marlon Tapales for the interim IBF title. I am interested to see what the 2020 year plays out for him. The current WBA and lineal champion Hiroto Kyoguchi. Kyoguchi had a huge 2018-2019 year. Light flyweight is his second weight class. He was the IBF champion at strawweight. But after a failed attempt to get a unification fight with Wanhang Menayoten, he was able to luckily land a fight against Heki Butler for the lineal and WBA light flyweight title. Now Butler had beaten Ryochi Taguchi earlier that year, who was the man at light fly. Kyoguchi and Toguchi are Watanabe Gym fighters. Though he couldn't get the fight with Wanhang, Kyoguchi picked the perfect opportunity to avenge his gym mate, becoming the man at Lightfly. Due to the coronavirus and Japan suspending any boxing till the end of April 15th, there's not any new news regarding who his next opponent will be. But the fight everyone wants to see is him and Kenshiro, 17-0 with 10 knockouts. Shiro is ranked number one in the world by Ring Magazine, right under Kyoguchi, who is the lineal champion of the division. He is a WBC champion and has made seven successful title defenses. Like what I said, the fight with him and Kyoguchi is the fight everyone wants. It's gotta happen. Naoya Inoue, 19-0, 16 knockouts. I went in full detail about Inoue's career, the best in boxing video I highly recommend if you haven't watched it to take a look. But to briefly explain, Inoue is a three division world champion. He's the current IBF, WBA, and lineal Bantamweight champion. He has had a hell of a resume, currently ranked number three by Ring Magazine as the pound for pound best fighter in boxing. On April 25th, he is fighting newly crowned WBO champion Jonathan Casmero in an almost undisputed unification bout. This is going to be a good fight. It's sad that we don't see much guys in the lower weight classes recently being inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. It's a shame, but this guy here definitely should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yoka is 25 and 2 with 14 knockouts. He is the first Japanese fighter to become champion in four different weight classes. He won his first title at 6 and 0, then to unify the strawweight division at 9 and 0. At one point in his career, it almost ended for good. In 2015 to 2017, he worked his ass off after his first career loss, became a three division world champion, and was in line for a unification super fight with amateur rival Zhu Shiming. Keep in mind, in 2017, Yoka was a far bigger name in Japan than Inoue. Zushiming pulled huge numbers in his country of China and was at that point the WBO champion. This fight would have generated stupid numbers. Possibly the only fight I can say which could rival Kameda Naido, which is yet to be broken. To tell you how many people watched Kameda Naido in 2009, it broke the record for the most watched broadcast in Japanese broadcasting history. More people tuned in to watch that fight than De La Hoya Mayweather and had almost equal ratings as Mayweather Canelo years before that fight took place, with Koki Kameda earning the nickname the Japanese Mayweather just based off the of TV ratings. In his second attempt, he was finally able to pull it off and make history, being the first four division world champion from Japan, and did it in 25 fights. That's a hell of an accomplishment. And just before the year ended, Yoka made one successful title defense, beating undefeated Javier Centron of Puerto Rico.
like I stated in the past, it's a damn shame. This guy is not in the top 10 pound for pound rankings. For what he has accomplished in such a short time at this age is absolutely unbelievable. 15 and 0, nine knockouts, three division world champion. Tanaka tied Vasily Lomachenko's record literally months after he set it as the fastest fighter to become champ in three divisions. And he became the youngest to ever do it at the age of 23 years old. He won his first world title at the age of 19 years old with the record of 4-0. Now I'm going to repeat this again. 19 years old, fighting for the world title with a record of 4-0. That should have grabbed headlines right there. We haven't heard of a fighter still in his teens winning a world title since the great Wilfredo Benitez, who was 17 years old with the record of 25-0 when he became the WBA champion. Tanaka became a two-division champion his eighth pro bout. His first defense of his second title was against undefeated 16 wins, all 16 by KO, Angel Acosta. This was his first fight West Coast audiences were being introduced to Tanaka as it aired online in the States for free. The 21-year-old Tanaka took Acosta to school, shutting him out in a wide unanimous decision victory. Then in the following years, being a fight a year candidate for the history books against Sho Kimura for the WBO title to become the three division world champion. Tanaka since then has made two title defenses and recently Tanaka has decided to move up to his fourth weight class. Since he is a WBO super champion, he could challenge any WBO champion in any weight class and make the WBO order that fight as if he was the mandatory and number one challenger. Tanaka is going after Kazuto Ioka at Superfly. At the age of 24, if Tanaka wins, he will be the youngest fighter to become a four division world champion and the fastest to do it too. And Ring Magazine, better put some respect on my boy's name and put this man in these damn pound for pound rankings. It shouldn't be like this, goddammit. Shouldn't be like this. And on top of that, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram for upcoming videos, boxing news, random edits, memes, whatever. I'm Alphys Hancho. And I'm out.